The search for God continues. Will we find him hidden in the deepest recesses of our brain? Or can we uncover the creator in a mathematical theory? Let's take a closer look at perhaps the strangest possibility of all. We'll start here. Will Wright is a creator of one universe at least. In the blockbuster hit video game, The Sims, this software genius created a world filled with digital people not too different from you and me. Well, The Sims inside the computer really are digital recreations. They're simulations of humans. And so we basically have to describe to the computer all of the kind of overall aspects that we think, you know, encompass humanity. I think humans are very good at displacing their identity into others. We call that empathy. And so a lot of the game is based around the empathy that you're feeling with the Sims, so that what they experience basically is what you're experiencing at one level removed. But consider this. How much empathy do you think you could feel with this Sim? And how much with this one? The rate of increase in computing power that we've seen in the past few decades shows no sign of abating. And the level of realism of computer simulations is bound to keep pace with that. When our sims look as real as our friends, won't the lines separating our real lives from our virtual lives begin to blur? Computers and games and simulations are kind of on this path of increased reality. You can see this in computer graphics and movies. As we experience these things at these very granular levels of detail, again, these experiences, I think, are starting to blur the line between real experiences and virtual experiences. Oh, who's to say we're not there already? One scientist from the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, California, believes we might be, and that the evidence could be all around us. Rich Terrell has helped design missions to Mars, discovered four new moons around Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus, and taken pictures of a distant solar system. He has a logical mind and a love for technology. Now he's bringing that logic to a bigger question. Who or what is the creator? For a God-centered universe, one has to think, well, first, what are the requirements for God? God is an interdimensional being connected with everything in the universe, a creator responsible for the universe, and in some way can change the laws of physics if he wanted to. And I think those are pretty good requirements for what God ought to be. Terrell thinks those requirements for God, making the laws of the universe and changing things at will, sound an awful lot like what programmers do when they create simulated environments. And then he started thinking about how much computing power it would take to create our world, our planet, all its life, and all of our brains. Moore's law is that computational power tends to double about every two years or 18 months. Actually, in the last uh, 18 years, it's been doubling every 13 months. Right now, at the fastest computers on the planet are now comparable or even exceeding the computational ability of the human brain, as we estimated. That's about one million billion operations per second. Where it's taking us is that in the next year, that'll double. In the next decade, that'll increase by a factor of 500. So a decade from now, our supercomputers will be about 500 times faster than the human brain. Rich is sure that computers a decade from now will be able to create a photoreal simulation of all that we see around us. But can a computer ever populate a simulated world with thinking beings like us? The answer is inside this box. Suppose I have a box, and in the box I've got, you know, a human brain, which is the mind or a person, and I've got a laptop computer. The human brain and a laptop computer are about the same weight, they're about the same volume, and they take about the same amount of power. Yet the human brain is about 100,000 times more powerful than a current day laptop. Well, suppose this is a laptop computer from 50 years from now, and I have them both in the box, and I start asking them questions, and I don't know which one is answering. 
If I can't tell the difference between a human being answering questions and a computer answering questions, then qualitatively, they're equivalent. And if I believe that the human is conscious and self-aware, I must also believe that the machine has the same qualities. Once computers have the power to simulate artificially intelligent beings inside a photorealistic representation of planet Earth, the ramifications are truly profound. Suppose we have an enormous simulation and we're simulating artificial intelligence. We created this universe, we're able to change the laws of physics, we're able to do all the things, all of those requirements that we put on God. We're on the brink of creating worlds inside the computers, filling them with sentient beings and becoming their gods. But this is not where Rich Terrell's quest for the creator ends. The next step is truly mind-bending. He believes that if science shows God can exist, then maybe he already does. Maybe we are the Sims and our creator is sitting at the controls of a supercomputer.